we have a very special guest in studio. He is one of our favorites, Dr. Stephen Mulholland, founder of Spa Medica, one of Canada's top cosmetic plastic surgeons. Welcome back to the show. Oh, thank you, Barb. It's always fun to be here. You know, one thing I really appreciate, I I know you came in on fairly short notice, and I thank you very much because you are a very busy person. Well, it's actually perfect around 8.30 is when I get off work. And so I start at 5 and I finish around 8. And so to come here at 8.30 is like coming after work. It's fun. When you have hours like that, how do you get anything done? How do you go to the doctor if you need to or get your teeth cleaned? Well, doctors are always the worst patients (laughs) because (laughs) we don't listen to the doctor. Yes. As we know, doctors make you sick. Number two, (laughs) I don't have time to make it during office hours. So, you know, I go online and I Google things on WebMD. (laughs) <laughs> just like the rest of exactly, us. Exactly. Honestly, I wonder, but I mean, obviously, I'm sure you have some help with getting stuff done and you have people in your office who help you with paying your, even paying your bills. I have an amazing assistant, um, that I, Patricia, who's been my assistant for a long, long, long time. And then an amazing wife. And it weren't for those two women, I'm not, my whole life would be unmanageable. For sure. Is this a busy time for you? I mean, we're kind of in, where are we? October, but getting close to the holidays, people start thinking about the big parties. Um, do things pick up a little bit? Yeah, things are, are busy now for really um, um, three reasons. Number one, pre-holidays. So um, if you're really truly getting ready for Christmas season, you know, October through m- middle of November after, after our Canadian Thanksgiving is the time to do things because if you get like a bit of a wonky Botox brow, you don't want to be presented at Christmas parties with that or you have filler gone bad or a lip bruise, you know. Give yourself a good six weeks before a big event so you, you don't have to blame it on, you know, a slip and a fall and too much alcohol. <laughs> you know, I didn't send you any pictures and I should have because as you're saying that, it reminded me of a story I saw recently. Simon Cowell. Simon Cowell uh, went, uh, who, who isn't on the keto diet, went on the keto diet, lost a lot of weight, but something changed about his face. And I read something recently that it's uh, one of those things where the Botox completely dropped his eyebrows. And it's almost like he can't even lift his forehead. Yeah, he, he had a, a little bit too much Botox in the brow and it descended and, and it doesn't move. And He's got that sort of Nicole Kidman circa the others, <laughs> 1990s brow on immobile look. And it, it doesn't look uh, attractive on a guy typically. So, uh, and I think um, Mr. Cow also had a bit of a neck work or a suture mm. suspension thread lift. So, you know, he's, he's, um, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a, a youthful looking gentleman for, for his age and uh, sometimes got to be cautious. So here we are. The second peak now would be those getting ready for red carpet season, which is around the corner. Um, those uh, going, let's say, to the Golden Globes or going to um, going to the Oscars need to start in advance. So this any, far in advance. Oh, yeah, you, no, totally. So they might be a, they might be getting their cool scalp thing, shrink down a couple of fat areas. Uh, they might be treating their um, their uh, axilla with Botox so they don't sweat because you don't want to get that horrific stain on the red carpet. A little bit of Botox in the face just to get it right. You have time to titrate it. The amount of filler is just right. So you typically, let's say you're getting married um, or or divorced, or you're getting <laughs> you have a you have a, you have a big you have a big event coming up. Plan 12 weeks in advance. Give yourself 12 really? weeks. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. So I was telling you about somebody I know mm-hmm. who, and I don't think it's going to be a big deal, but there's a big event coming up in a couple of weeks. And today was the day to get some kind of uh, mole removed from the face with a couple of stitches. And it's a cut, you know, so two weeks sounds like a lot and probably will be okay, but you just never know with the healing. Yeah, it's, 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 if you have an event coming up that's important, a family event, a reunion, um, uh, some type of uh, of a wedding, or you're in a wedding party, these things, you know, are memorialized in photos. If it's a settlement agreement with your ex, you probably don't care as much. <laughs> and so it's very, very important that you, you uh, give yourself a good six to 12 weeks uh, before a big event, before you engage in any kind of enhancement, even Botox and filler, a bruise can really get in the way. Uh, of, a, of, a, of a good look, of a good social event. Yeah, and I guess people think, um, I imagine there are people who are getting married or having a big event and and 
these stars make it look like, oh, you just go get your lip injections and you're ready to go, where the reality is there can be a lot of bruising. Um, and bruising, doesn't it get worse before it gets better in it some Totally. Way? And we, we get so much of this overhyped lunchtime this or lunchtime right. that. You can get it done in your lunchtime, but you look <laughs> horrific for three days. And what so, can you, is there anything you can do in your lunchtime that nobody else will notice? Um, typically, you could come in and get your bikini hair removal done. <laughs> yes, that you could do. Depending and, on where you work. Uh, depending on where you work, yes. Uh, assuming you're fully clothed, uh, no one's going to know. And so I would say there's lots you can do at your lunchtime, but you're going to look pretty horrible going back to work. And so I, I, that's why I do a lot of my non-invasive things on Friday or Saturday. And so that people can actually not miss too much work. They have a weekend to recover and and their po- a spouse can put up with it. That's great advice. And we'll talk more about that because you're right. Everything is promoted as the lunchtime facelift and the <laughs> how is this even possible? All right. The phone lines are open at 416-872-1010. You can text us at 71010. Dr. Stephen Mulholland is here. He is a founder of Spa Medica, one of Canada's top cosmetic plastic surgeons. If you have questions about any type of procedure, he does it all. I've got some questions for him when the night side continues. Well, Welcome back to the night side. Great to have you along. Dr. Stephen Mulholland is here. We're taking your calls, answering your questions. Now, somebody has done this and you are welcome to do it as well. We'd love to have you come on the line. You can be anonymous or give us a different name. Someone has called and asked a question that we are going to ask Dr. Stephen Mulholland. But we will start uh, with the phone lines. And just as we were going to break, I mentioned that Sarah, the Duchess of York, is about to turn 60, and she has recently opened up about cosmetic surgery and facelifts, and I guess the stigma is not what it used to be. There is no question. When I opened up Spa Medic in 1997, there was still a stigma around plastic surgery, the scars, the recovery, and we had a lot of, you know, over-operated on um, iconic figures out of Hollywood. It was kind of a scary and taboo thing. But over the last 25 years, there's been a destigmatization um, with the growth in, in non-invasive treatments and more natural-looking invasive treatments with the popularization in Hollywood and social media. And virtually everyone who's on Instagram and an influencer or in Hollywood and an actor or actress has getting things done, whether it's just photo facial and hair removal and Botox or cool sculpting, or it's a facelift or a blepharoplasty or a nose job, there's nothing wrong now being perceived as taking ownership of how you want to look as long as it's not over the top. I have a feeling, I, I might know part of why that is, before all of this social media stuff started, anybody having any work done was an admission that you are getting old. But young people are doing it now. Yeah, we've got the rise of the millennial. It sounds like a horror movie. I know. Now, as a father of six, four of which are millennials, I can attest to it. It is kind of horrific. <laughs> um, this is 80 million, 90 million uh, adults now. And we brought them up, so it's the boomers now. It's our fault. Um, and they live in a terribly um, um, competitive world, you know, to get a job has never been more difficult. It's extremely competitive. We have these old boomers hanging on until we die in our job. And uh, and the contracts are uncertain. And dating is a one second left or right swipe. Um, so it, it never has the book been less important than the cover of the book. And mm. here's a metaphor for dating. You want to get read a lot and get your book opened? Have a nice cover. Because <laughs> ain't so no true. one opening a dusty cover, even if the content's vacuous. 416-872-1010. You can text us at 71010. Debbie is on the line. Hi, Debbie. Go ahead with Dr. Mulholland. Hi. Um, I had a silicone insert in my chin when I was about 13, 14 years old. And I am now 66. Wow. <laughs> um, how... How, like, it's the hard silicone yeah. kind of Yeah, the, the old, at, at 13, and, wow, you were very young. Your parents just offered you up for a chin implant? Or, yeah, what, what wow. was that about? I had, okay. I had, An undergrown chin. I also chin. have, since then, mm-hmm. I, have, I also had a rhinoplasty. Okay, okay. So I had kind of the large nose and the, small the receding chin, chin yeah. that was yeah. quite receding. 
And I just want to know, like, I've never been checked out to have this. Do you silicone. feel it, Debbie? Do you feel it? Is it? Would that be something that would be? Uh, what would that be like from back then? That's Dr. Fair, it's, a, it's a very common combo. That it's, that's it's a, very. It mm-hmm. feels like a bone. Yeah. Okay. And so you had a solid silicone implant, silastic. It's made yeah. of which is highly, highly. Um, it's called vulcanized silicone. Very, very safe, and very common. Even today, chin implants made of the same silastic are very inert. They're well tolerated by your body. And they will last the rest of your life. I mean, you'll have a beautiful open casket funeral with a lovely oh, chin. So I wouldn't worry. It's going to look amazing. And so, uh, you know, the one thing that can occasionally occur, sometimes the implant can, eat, can erode into your bone a bit. And so you might be wise to have your dentist do uh, what's called a panorax, an x-ray of your chin, just to make sure there's been no erosion. But that's, been, that's extremely uncommon. You so, know what? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it it was life changing for me. I bet it was quite extreme. Yeah, um, considering the I rhinoplasty had, and then the chin implant, that must and you know it's good that well, your the parents... rhinoplasty was later in okay. life. But um, the chin, yeah, definitely was l- because my chin was very receded. Right. So I would say and, that that the craniofacial disproportion that you mentioned is extremely common. Um, so where there's a, an overgrown chin and you're a guy with a Mulrooney-esque type of projection. The very strong very chin. Very strong. Or with women, it's commonly an underbite and you have not much of a chin and it makes your nose look even bigger. And so um, you can be, it can be very devastating as, a, as an adolescent to have these um, what are called um, skeletal dysplasias. And just so anybody knows. Mm-hmm. It's lasted this long. That's well, amazing. Yeah. Did you tell your Did you tell your husbands, or uh, was it? <laughs> did they even know? Does anybody know? Have you told like your family, or do I'm oh, sure? Yeah. Oh, every everybody like, knows. My oh, family good. knows. Anybody that's close to me. Interestingly, knows. was right. one were your daughters uh, were they born with a small chin? And, hmm? Were your kids born with a small chin? Did you pass I, it on? Uh, unfortunately, I was unable to have children. Oh, that, I'm sorry. Oh, I, that. Yeah. But there was a story I know of a Korean, wealthy Korean fellow, and he married this beautiful Korean gal who was in her 30s. And then they had this child that was apparently extremely unattractive. And then he found out that his wife had all this cosmetic surgery and he sued her successfully for fraud and misrepresentation. Is that a true story? It's a true story. You look it up on the internet. Yeah. You know, so you got to be cautious when you get this <laughs> yeah. young cosmetic surgery because you can't pass that chin implant along. No, but no. you can pass the, the chin along. Here yes. is Daki. Welcome to the show. Hello? We're going to put Daki back on hold. We're going to take a break. And if Daki is still there, uh, we will get to that question. We've got other questions coming in. Give us a call. 416 872 Text us at 71010. Dr. Stephen Mulholland is here. You are listening to The Night Side. Welcome back to the show on this Thursday evening. Special guest Dr. Stephen Mulholland is here, founder of Spa Medica, one of Canada's top cosmetic plastic surgeons, traveling all over the world, teaching people about the procedures that he invented, he created. Uh, We will discuss more about that, but we have a bunch of questions people are asking. We want to get to them, and we open the phone lines to you at 416-872-1010. Anything big or small you've been thinking about, maybe down the road, how much would it cost, what's the recovery time like, that is everything that he does at his place of work. Big stuff, small stuff. He does it all. 416-872-1010. Daki has been waiting patiently. Hi, Daki. Hello, Barb. Thank you for your show. Thank you. And happy to talk to Dr. Mulholland. Thank you for calling. Hello, Dr. Mulholland. Um, I am calling because I have a small growth at the side of my nose, Mm -hmm. and I've consulted with my retired dermatologist. He said that a plastic surgeon should remove it. Um, I have a a dermatologist at present, and she's telling me she can just, zap it off um i i would like to know maybe your thoughts about this number one and also number two i'd like to know if you do anything at your offices like this looking ahead i feel i would like to have this removed it's not cancerous i'm told but you know i just like to have it away has it grown 
Well, mm, I don't think so, Barb. And, and looking at it, you don't notice it. But you know how it is. You yes. just know it's there. And one <laughs> thing's certain. When I do get it done, I want it done properly. Yeah, it's you, a good point. You know, point. I don't just want it zapped off. So I'm really not comfortable with that. And then the fact that my dermatologist referred me to a plastic surgeon. There must be a reason. All right. Well, we'll find out. So, um, And also if Dr. Mulholland can, can do this. All right. Let's hear what he has to say Thank about it. Thank you, Barb. How, how young are you? Oh, I'm a senior. Oh, I'm so, 70. Oh, so not a senior in college. <laughs> Pardon? Not a senior in college. No. no. Okay. And how long has this been growing? For a few years? And is well, it... I'd say I've had it, let's see, about two years. Okay. Oh, not long. Okay. So yeah. typically you want to make sure, and you already distinguished, that your dermatologist felt this wasn't cancerous. Cancerous growths are a bit different than benign growths. Usually on the, on the nose, they're going to be a benign mole. If it's off to the side, there are, there are a couple of good options. A very carefully excising it with a couple of, of, of strategic and cosmetic stitches. Or sometimes... Um, just zapping it off, um, oh. as your dermatologist mentioned, sounds a bit cavalier. Typically, yeah. typically because the nose is quite sebaceous, we can often use a delicate shaving technique and then use some la- uh, lasers to blend it in. And so there are some very, very cosmetically um, appealing ways to remove a nose mole. And the best thing to do is uh, reach out to a uh, um, a cosmetic plastic surgeon does that kind of thing at Spa Medica. We do offer that. And, and typically, you would call in and say, I have an, a nose lesion that's bugging me. And they'll ask you to take your cell phone, which I'm sure you have a nice iPhone or Samsung. You take a photo of it, send it in. You kind of get a free consultation because there's no point coming in, wasting the time and money if it can't be done. And so just send a photo in and typically I or or uh, Dr. Roskies or Dr. Bray, the three plastic surgeons there, would send you back an email uh, through the um, uh, online consultant corner. Yeah, sure, you can get that cut off. It looks benign, and we'd able to do a good job. And it probably runs in the anywhere from $750 and up for a mole done by um, a certified plastic surgeon. So typically, less than you'd spend on a syringe of Juvederm. So... That's really interesting and probably saves you guys a lot of time by just having people send in pictures and you can tell them. Yeah, I do that now rather than waste the time. And typically in a couple of minutes, I could look at it and give you a little feedback and say, yeah, that would take maybe 15 minutes. This is what it would cost. And well, it's um, it's right at the side. You know mm-hmm. where the per- the nostril is? And sure. then your nose meets the skin or, it, or yeah. the cheek. It's, yeah. yeah, that's a very, very common area. And it's kind oh. of annoying because it's kind of witchy. Is it growing hair? Oh, no. 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 People don't notice it. They say, okay. I don't. But I know. And you looking see down there. ahead, I want to prepare. Uh, no, uh, now, would I need to be put out? Like no. A- oh, that's no. a good question. So yeah. how is this? How uh, would this be? Because that's pretty minor, right? No, yeah, we wouldn't put you out. That's what we do with sick pets. Typically, <laughs> we would just give you a little local anesthesia. Mm-hmm. And uh, I use a lot of laughing gas. I th- it's great. And so we give you a little laughing gas, a little freezing, like local anesthesia. Uh, and then it's removed in a couple of stitches in that location, and you're fine. And if it's you did the, it, if you did it soon, you'd be ready for Halloween. It's, <laughs> it's the lunchtime excision. Yeah, but That's, not the lunchtime recovery. There's a little bit of swelling. You have a few stitches that have to come out. But typically, it's in a very strategically and cosmetic location. And a lot of people might say, "Oh, don't worry about it. No one notices." But you do. You know, I know someone who had something non-cosmetic done, but a pretty big surgery. I'm going to say it's amazing the surgeries that will be done without knocking someone completely out. Yeah, so typically, um, you know, I'm a fan of anything uh, that allows the patient to be relaxed and have the procedure done, uh, but not die of an anesthetic. I mean, anesthetics can be risky. And so typically nowadays, we've got such amazing stuff we can give you intravenously or laughing gas with local anesthesia. It's very uncommon to have to have a general anesthetic anymore, unless you're manipulating muscle like a tummy tuck with muscle or under the, um, under the muscle breast augmentation. Most things are done without a tube in your throat, without a ventilator, without paralysis, almost like colonoscopy. You know, if you've ever had a colonoscopy, you go, they're going to put what, where? And then 
you wake up and it's done. Right. You know? And I guess the point of um, just doing um, uh, local is that the recovery out of that is a lot faster too. Totally. Right? And so you're not, you don't feel like you're out of it for a week recovering from gen a general anesthesia. So the risks are less, the recovery is quicker. And uh, typically it makes it much more accessible. Dr. Stephen Mulholland is here. We have to take another break. And then we've got one more segment left. We're almost done. I don't know where the hour goes. 416-872-1010. You can text us at 71010. We've got lots to talk about with the doctor. We've got more of your questions. It's all coming up on the night side. Welcome back to the show. Great to have you along. Dr. Stephen Mulholland is here. Founder of Spa Medica, one of Canada's top cosmetic plastic surgeons. I had a question that I was thinking about today that I wanted to ask you. When I mean, everybody that you socialize with obviously knows what you do, but when people meet you at a social function and find out what you do, do they have the discussion with you about what should I do? It is a per it's a perpetual occupational hazard. So when people say, what do you do? I say, oh, I'm a philanthropist. Well, what do you mean? Oh, I'm a cutaneous philanthropist. I'm devoted to the beautification of Toronto, whether you need it or not. And then they say, well, look at me oddly. Well, what is that? Well, I'm a plastic surgeon. Mm. And then, of course, inevitably, you can see, what do you think I should do? And then, obviously, I've learned over many, many years, I say, simply say, I would do nothing. You look amazing. Oh. And that's always the standard answer. Um, or I'll say something like, well, you come and see when you're old enough. And you know, the person's like 82. Right. And so I think it's, uh, you know, not everybody wants it, needs it, or should even consider it. Uh, but we live in a, a culture now where there's not as much stigma. And if you want to uh, be empowered with changing how you look and how people perceive you, then you're able to do that. But I get a lot of party consultation. I just say, look, you know, it's probably not the appropriate place to talk about this. I really wouldn't do anything. I think you look great. You know, but if you ever feel you don't look great, give my office a call. You know, I, I think I read somewhere once, um, even if people come to see you, uh, a plastic surgeon was saying, you got to be careful when somebody says, what would you do? Because you might be seeing something that they've never thought of. And all of a sudden it's going to become a thing for them. It can be devastating, you know? And, and so people say, what do you think? What would you do? I would say, do nothing. You look great. You look now, amazing. if somebody comes to your office and says, I just kind of feel like I'm looking a little bit older or I'm looking tired all the time. Um, how do you deal with that? I start with a photo and, um, I put the photo in front of them and they've had to submit the photo with online consultation process. And I say, take this uh, pen and outline the things that bug you and why. I make them outline it. And so, oh, you know, okay, I get that seems reasonable. And so what are your expectations? What would you like it to look like? Mm -hmm. you know, what do you, you know, what are you hoping to achieve? If, you know, if they say, well, I'd like to be, uh, you know, 18 again, that's not very realistic, especially when you know, when, when you're in your late 60s. So it's got to be a realistic sense of, of what's wrong. And if they're on the right track of what they want to achieve, that is realistic. Because the number one complication of plastic surgery is not medical. It's psychological. It's re unrealistic expectations. I can't save a marriage that's going bad. I can't get you off antidepressants. I can't, I can't change your life. I can change your face or your figure. And then you and that enhanced confidence need to be able to change your life. And a lot of women say, well, I don't need that to be confident. I'm feeling good anyway. And then I say, great, great. you don't need plastic surgery. And yeah. that's amazing. And so at a party, I just say, you don't need, I don't think you need anything. You look great. But one day, if you don't feel that way, come and see me. Well, and that phrase. But what you have to be careful of uh -huh. is when you see patients that are your patients at a party, because I just ignore them because that's violating their federal privacy. I can imagine if someone comes up, I say, hey, how you doing? You look great, you know. But, and then <laughs> her friends are looking at her like, oh, what did you do? Yeah, that's right. Do? So I just ignore people. And sometimes patients go and say, you ignored me. That was very rude. You should have said something. I said, well, you have a federal enshrined privacy. And, and if you're talking to me, people can assume you've done something. I have to read a text message to you. Hi, Dr. Mulholland, and hi, Barb. I think Dr. Mulholland is the best doctor in the world. I did have him for breast augmentation. I wish to remain anonymous, but I consider him a sculptor. He changed my life, and I'm so happy with what happened. Well, thank you very much. And uh, those, those are the, the reasons why I love what I do. I did, did, I did do head and neck cancer for about seven years, and mm -hmm. unfortunately... 50% of my patients uh, passed away from, oh, really? smoke, from sm smoker's cancer. And after about seven, eight years, I was, it just wasn't my personality. And the reason I went into this, because I never thought I would just, I would be doing cosmetic plastic surgery, 
is that uh, nobody dies typically. Everyone's super happy if you select them well. And like this uh, young lady, it feels good that someone it really has changed your life. And you could argue, well, you know, it's 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 just cosmetic surgery. But we live in such a visual culture, and we are judged um, so much on how we look and how we present. And typically, if you've had never had breasts that matched your figure, you've had a couple of kids that suck the life right out of them. It's almost like reconstructive, restorative surgery. So I, I really like it. I, I've had a great 25 years, and, and patients like that make it just worthwhile. Somebody writes in, can you please ask if there's anything safe to have done while pregnant? Well, it's safe to lie on your back and watch <laughs> Netflix. Um, but, you know, I have to say that uh, pregnancy is a temporary state, and the, the risks of having a fetal uh, disruption or a placental disruption or a fetal effect from a chemical or a drug is going to basically eliminate um, Botox because it's a chemical. You don't want to cross the, the uh, placental barrier, soft tissue fillers, even lasers and energy devices. They have an electromagnetic radiation and a field around them that might uh, stimulate uterine contractions and premature delivery. Um, skincare products have a lot of um, potentially um, unhealthy chemicals in them. So typically, we don't offer any service uh, during um, pregnancy because even microdermabrasion, the little microdermabrator device has a, a low energy RF and, and a field around it that can be quite unhealthy. And so I just say to women, you know, it kind of sucks because, you know, your skin can go to crap and you can be getting hairs all over the place. You start to get rosacea, but as a temporary state, that little thing that you're making there is worth it. Wait until you've delivered. And then, of course, we can mop up after the pregnancy. <laughs> mop up. Here is Erica on the line with Dr. Mulholland. Hi, Erica. Go ahead. Hi. Thanks so much for taking my call. Sure. Um, I've been curious about, now I'm not sure what term it goes by, Belkyra or Kybella. Uh, I seem to be developing this sort of um, turkey neck that I don't really like, and I've heard that that might be something that might help me. Um, and how young are you? I'm in my 40s. Okay, so you're still quite young. Um, you got to be careful because a turkey season is just still, still here in Canada, so <laughs> don't walk in the wilderness, for goodness sakes, wear a yellow jacket. Um, and so um, double chins are typically a hereditary curse, so I bet you if you look at your mom or your grandma or your dad, the double chin kind of ran in the family, maybe you had yeah. a couple of kids, you put on put on a little weight, and I know it didn't go to your breast, your lips, your high cheekbone, it went to your <laughs> went to your chin. And so it's the curse of the double chin. And so what to do about it? Well, you know, if you read online about Kybella or Belkyra, it's a chemical that breaks down fat. And so we inject it in the double chin, it kills some of the fat cells, and it'll shrink your chin. Unfortunately, not as much as we want, and it's not inexpensive. So it was often marketed like Botox for fat. You just inject it, it melts your double chin, and it disappears away. So for small double chin, and um, it's called Kybella in the United States and Belkyra up here. Don't ask me why. Mm -hmm. It's something to do with the regulatory bodies, but it's exactly the same chemical. So if you have a little modest chin, like you can pinch it, it's maybe a centimeter in diameter. It's just something you see when you put your chin down. Then Kybella in the U.S., Belkyra in her Canada, it's not a bad option. However, typically it needs two injections about six weeks apart. And it's quite swollen in between. So what we do at Spa Medica is we'll inject a little Belkyra and then we'll strap on this uh, device, either cool sculpting submental it's called or, or sculpture or another device. And we, we heat up or cool your fat down. So we try to get rid of it in a single treatment. If, however, you have more than, let's say, two centimeters, and it's a substantial double chin, like almost a waddle, you might call it, or a dewlap, which are very attractive names for double chins, <laughs> yes. and it becomes, you know, like, see, the, uh, 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 like a, it's become the, um, the hypotenuse on a triangle, and you just, and, and it's, <laughs> then typically I would just say, there's not enough Kybella, it's gonna cost you a lot of money, you're gonna be frustrated, you've spent three, four thousand dollars on Kybella, and now you have um, not a double chin, but you have half of a double chin, it's a waste of money. And then I typically use local anesthesia, I go in there with a little probe, it's called Nectite, and it melts the fat, but rather than leave it, like Kybella that breaks the fat down, we just, 
Yeah. We suck the fat out. And then I can guarantee you get your, your chin back again and you have about a week recovery, but it's only done once. So when does lipo become important? When you've got a healthy waddle and it's just a, a quite a significant, like more than an inch, which, um, you know, for older people like me and middle young people like you, that's <laughs> going to be about two and a half to three centimeters. You might as well have a modern day lipo treatment done with radio frequency devices or a small laser. You have almost no bruising. 100% of the fat you don't like will be gone. And you really only have about a three-day recovery. Can Erica do that thing where she contacts the office and then sends a picture? Sure, send a picture. If there's a tiny waddle and you want no surgery, Kybella plus cool sculpting or sculpture, one of those devices under the chin can work. If you got a, a substantial like hereditary waddle or you want the best neck you can get, like back to what you had when you are 18, 19, um, uh, then probably lipo is your best option. What bugs you most about it? Is it your selfie shots? What bugs you most about your double chin? I, I just feel like I don't have a jawline. Mm. Uh huh. So that sounds like you. May, and are you are you uh, happily in a relationship? <laughs> Depends on the day. Okay, okay. Well, there you go. Well, <laughs> the reason I'm saying is that if you're back in the dating market and you have to post a picture. How many pictures can you take that aren't like a three quarter? And that's can, that can be a bit annoying. But it sounds like you may be a best candidate for just some local anesthesia, 30 minute um, modern lipo technique, which is done with laughing gas and freezing. And it takes longer to do a wisdom tooth than to do the double chin. <laughs> Erica, thanks for your call. Thanks to everybody who called in and texted in. We didn't have time to get to all the questions. We'll have you back again soon. Thank you for this. Thank you, Kim Parr. Always great to have you. Dr. Stephen Mulholland. The website is spamedica.ca. Oh, dot com. Dot com. Spamedica.com. Thank you. And uh, check him out. He is one of Canada's top cosmetic plastic surgeons. And you'll see before and afters on the website and lists of all of the services that they offer. And we always appreciate having him here. You're listening to The Nightside. 